Hello everybody, it's Julia here from the Highly Sensitive Tarot and I'm back today with another in my series of Learn Tarot and we're going to look at the eights today. So this will follow the same format as my previous videos. We'll have a look at each of the suits in turn. I'll put timestamps in this video if you don't want to look at all of them. Um, and please do leave me a comment. Please do um, give me some feedback. That would be wonderful. Um, if you've watched all of my Learn Tarot videos or some of them, I'm eternally grateful. I really, really appreciate every single one of you that watches and supports me. So thank you very much. And um, let's get into the eights. So in, in numerology, eights would represent courage. They might symbolise courage and transformation. Um, the number eight can speak of the death of outdated ways of doing and thinking, and it can make way for the new and the relevant, the things that serve your higher good. So this can be a scary um, kind of number, I suppose, because it brings about change and movement. Um, but generally, with eights, things will be better in the long run. So looking at the first set of cards we've got here, we've got the wands. And the eight of wands in astrology is associated with Mercury in Sagittarius. So that would tell you something of the eight of wands, as in Mercury is a planet of communication, of swift communication, of connections, but generally swift, um, faster moving energies. And Sagittarius is a fire sign and it's a fire sign associated with expansiveness, um, I think. So that would fit very well, wouldn't it, with the Eight of Wands? Because as we can see here, there is a lot of movement. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, in its higher realms... This is very much a card of movement and expansion. This is like a sudden burst of creative energy, um, an increase in creative imagination. These can be busy and exciting times, but they can also be overwhelming times where you feel that you might be ju just juggling too much. You might have too many burdens, too much to think about, too many things to do. There could be travel and trips. Um, sudden progress with things, um, good communication. And we can see here with the wands, even though we've got eight wands here and they're all in movement, they're all kind of aligned, aren't they? They're all kind of set up one after the other. They're not chaotic, they are in uniform. So there is purpose to this movement. Um, we've also got this lovely... Um, what are the birds? Um, do you know my brain? Cranes, maybe cranes. I think they're cranes, aren't they? In the pensive path tarot. Um, and that's a common th sort of image that we see with the Eight of Wands, isn't it? Birds taking flight. So that fits really well. We also have the flaming arrows here with the moon in the Raven's Prophecy. And then we have this lovely white cat with all of the wands and the what look like swallows or swifts, but certainly birds that um, certainly birds that move quickly, birds that are swift of flight, swift of movement. So, in its lower realms, the eight of wands could represent, I suppose, hastily made decisions, feeling restless and all over the place, quarrels. Um, having blocked imagination, procrastinating yet again, one of my favourite things, going back and forth, just being overwhelmed with information, really. So if we were going to ask questions that would aid us to look at the energy of the Eight of Wands to self-reflect with, we could ask questions such as, what are you being carried away by or overwhelmed by? What are you rushing into? What do you need to tell others about?
because as I said, this is definitely a card of rapid and swift communication. And I think lastly, another question that's very pertinent to this energy is, are you getting enough rest? Because too much of this energy is a certain path to burnout, I would say. <laughs> so there we go. I shall be back with the cups next. OK, so the Eight of Cups. So the astrology relating to this energy is Saturn in Pisces. So Saturn is a very slow moving planet. Um, Pisces is the last um, astrology sign of the zodiac. It's a water sign. Um, I think that's about as much as I can tell you there. So in its higher realms, the Eight of Cups might talk of accepting what you can't change, of moving on. And we can see that here, can't we, very much, that this person is walking away, they're leaving something behind. And in the pensive path tarot, all that's left of them is their shoes. The door is ajar, we can see that somebody was there and they're now gone. They have left the building. <laughs> so this is about giving up and starting anew, really. You could say that this was about moving into the unknown with faith. Um, it could be leaving the material life behind in order to follow a spiritual path. Um, this card could also imply divorce or separation or a very literal move, you know, something packing up and moving home. Um, especially if you're moving to an unknown place or a place that you are not familiar with. It could just be that you've emotionally extended yourself. Um, in your search for a deeper meaning in life, really. Um, as I said, we can see the person moving away in the darkness. Um, we can see a person that has left. Let's have a look at the Eight of Cups in the Raven's Prophecy book here. Let's see what these feathers might be telling us. So the key words here are stagnation, moving and dissatisfaction. So I chose to use an image of reflected feathers on the Eight of Cups to call back to the reflected image on the Four of Cups. OK, so both the Four and the Eight speak to stagnation and plateauing in your relationships. The difference is that the Four represents new relationships suffering because of neglect and the eight represents established relationships that are simply not satisfying anymore. The situation in many ways has become untenable, and the longer that you stew in it, the more nothing happens. These floating feathers on the card aren't going anywhere without a wind of change. So when you see this card, it is an acknowledgement that your emotional situation is simply not working for you. Not only does it not satisfy you, it just seems unfixable. When you imagine all the steps required to make it into a place you'd like to stay, you grow exhausted. So the only course of action is to take yourself out of the situation. You need to shed the things in your life that aren't working for you. It's time to realise that you have the power to be that wind of change and whirl yourself away. So there we go. In its lower realms, this card can very definitely talk of disappointment, disillusionment, dissatisfaction, grief, misery, exhaustion, feeling emotionally drained and quite depressed, I think. So if we were to ask questions of ourselves to reflect upon the energy of this card, it might be who or what is drawing on your energy and leaving you emotionally drained. Really get down to specifics. Um, we could ask what relationships or values are no longer relevant or serving you. And we could ask how can you withdraw and take time to renew and re-energise re yourself. So there we go. That's quite a difficult energy, really, the Eight of Cups. 
Okay, so the Eight of Swords. So the Eight of Swords in astrology is represented by Jupiter in Gemini. So we've got Jupiter, which is a planet of luck and fortune and change. And we've got Gemini, which is an air sign, which is mercurial. It's um, associated with Mercury um, and is quite analytical, I think, really. So this, again, is a difficult energy. This is a strange energy. I think in its higher realms, this can represent analytical thinking, um, honestly facing the truth in a situation and acceptance of consequences, really. Um, but generally, when this card is read, it's read more in its lower realms because, well, it's the imagery on the cards that we're reading, isn't it? We've got a person here who's tied and surrounded by swords and blindfolded. We've got a person who is struggling, who's, you know, putting a lot of effort into something somebody who's quite trapped really by that um we've got a hand here that's being grabbed and held um i'm not really quite sure what's going on with the cat here at the end this is a very new deck to me this grim olkins deck and i'm still sort of getting to know it which is why i thought i'd use it in these videos but it's a very rider weight smith based card and um, I think just is read in a very similar way I think what we're seeing here is this cat who has the swords in front of him and um, it's almost separating him from the water from the rain here and I'm not entirely sure why if you know why if you're able to read that better than me <laughs> please do tell me in the comments but I'm going to have a little read from the book just to see what Maggie says about the eight of swords here and then I'll go on and tell you how I associate the eight of swords really because um, as I said it's very difficult to read the eight of swords in a very positive way so she's got here the key words are self-doubt confusion imprisonment and control so it is, it's like this cat is imprisoned, isn't it, behind these swords here, really? Yeah, this man here is imprisoned and trapped by the thing that he's pulling. <laughs> so when you pull the Eight of Swords, you finally met your worst enemy. The enemy that the tarot deck constantly talks about, but rarely points the finger at. The devil card points firmly at this enemy, though, and so does this card. That enemy is you. <laughs> I love Maggie Stefvata. Steph I love this guidebook for the Raven's Prophecy. It's really, well, it just tells it like it is, really. So much of our problems in life come back to us, don't they? <laughs> Nearly every artistic interpretation of this card involves some kind of binding. Binding, The original Rider Way art features a woman who is blindfolded, loosely tied and surrounded by swords. Her binding is so loose that at any point she could choose to slip her hands out, pull down her blindfold and step out of her self-imprisoned, self-imposed prison of swords. Likewise, on my card, the right hand grips the left. There is no other attacker. <laughs> there was me thinking that was an attacker. You are the assailant and you are the victim. So when this card appears, it's good news and bad news. You have all the tools you need to escape your current painful situation. And we can see that here on this card because we've got one swords, cups, um... And we've got the infinity symbol there, haven't we? You don't need to go looking. You don't need to strive for more weaponry. It's right here and it could be over today. But the bad news is that you don't want to. And you are, after all, your most powerful enemy. Something is keeping you in place. Be it self-doubt, confusion about what you really want, or perhaps a certainty that what you really want goes against your principles in some way. 
a battle rages inside you and so you remain utterly motionless. The Eight of Swords urges you to realise that you are the problem here, not any of the excuses that you've made, and to use that knowledge to find a solution. Now's the time to realise that you have control, whether or not you want it. Take the wheel and drive out of this place. So, we've been told, haven't we, by Maggie there, and she's quite right. That is what this card is about. This is self-imposed misery, really. This is um, that sort of lethargy that comes with having to make painful decisions, I think, of not wanting to go through the process, the painful process, in order to allow change into your life. So in its lower realms, I've written in my book, this is restrictions, fear and indecision, that sort of damned if you do, do damned if you don't situation. The longer you stay, the more you entrap yourself, tying yourself up in knots. You must have the strength to endure the cuts or you will stay trapped. The longer the situation continues, the worse it will get. And I feel that that is the truth here. I love this. I think that's brilliant. This is a new deck to me really as well. And I've not not had a great amount of time to study it. But I love that, that it's the, it's the, what is it? It's the right hand that's grabbed the left. <laughs> so you are the attacker and the victim at the same time. So if we were going to ask questions to help us to self-reflect about this energy, we could ask, what would you like to be doing if you could move past these obstacles? We could ask who or what could assist you to break free. And I think thirdly, and really very relevantly, is what benefits do you gain by not acting? I think that's a very important question. OK, so lastly, we've got the Eight of Pentacles. And with astrology, this is the sun in Virgo. So this is this is a positive. Um, the sun is a, always a very positive energy and Virgo is quite a meticulous energy. So um, the energy of servitude and learning and. Um, and refining things, perhaps. So in its higher realms, this is the Apprentice card. It's a card of starting over or perhaps expanding your employment or a business or a hobby. This is hard work with practical ideas. This is dedication, endurance, um, a hobby turning into a paid proposition, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> We can see that here with somebody sat working very hard to perfect their skills in making these pentacles. Um, we can see that here, particularly with the violins, because I would imagine to make violins is an extremely skilled um, and precise um, craft. With the Raven's Prophecy, we've got a spade and a... I don't know what that is, a hoe, maybe a rake, which would imply hard work. Um, and then with the eight of pentacles there, we've got the cat at the end there with Grim Walkins. We've got the cat grooming itself. So again, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I suppose the dedication of a cat to its grooming um, to looking after itself. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit confused by that, I think. Where's the guidebook for that? I have got that here. I'm going to have to look that up, you know. Let's have a look. As I said, I've, that's quite a new um, deck to me, the Grim Walkins cat. So it says the cat of the eight of pentacles is a finicky feline with the temperament of a perfectionist. He will meticulously groom himself until not a single hair is out of place, regardless of how long that takes. So there we go. 
that's the dedication, the hard work. Um, yeah. The energy of the Eight of Pentacles is one of not settling for second best, for putting in the work and learning as much as you can before calling something complete. Just as some situations require us to go inward to find the solution, the Eight of Pentacles indicates that now is the time to work on your skills and your abilities. Whether it be a creative project or even a relationship, if the goal is to create a perfect situation, you may wish to inquire about taking classes or learning how to improve what you're already doing. Of course, perfection is often the enemy of good, and in a reading you may want to contemplate if you are allowing the notion that you are not skilled or talented enough to be an excuse to hold you back. So when the Eight of Pentacles pops up, my first question is, do you feel worthy of admiration? Especially for women, we are told that unless we are perfect, we shouldn't put ourselves out there. So when the Eight of Pentacles appears, it may be a good time to ask yourself if you are letting fear of being imperfect hold you back. So there we go. That's the cat who is a perfectionist who won't stop licking and grooming until every hair is in the place that it should be. <laughs> so in its lower realms, this... Eight, um, these eights could represent a lack of a bit ambition, I suppose, vanity. You know, we could say that that was a vanity there with the cat, couldn't we? Disillusionment, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of limitation, fear of not being good enough, fear, fear of not being perfect. So if we were going to ask some questions to use to self-reflect on this energy, we could ask, what skill or craft are you learning? How can you create a regular time and place to work? What are you doing to take care of yourself physically and mentally while you're working hard? Because obviously we have to remember that when you're dedicating so much of your time and energy to one thing, that can lead to burnout. Um, and lastly, I think, do you have an outlet for frustration and fears? And I would say that while you're learning and you're trying to hone your craft and perfect your skills, that it would be very good and important to have some support with that, wouldn't it? So there we go. That's all the eights. And um, I really do hope to be back quite soon to finish... Um, the minor arcana cards off in my series of and I will be coming back with the nines and the tens so I do hope that you enjoyed that please do leave me a comment give me some feedback that would be fantastic and I shall see you again soon thank you